Hello. Hi, everybody. Greg Yamico here. And I think we're live. It's still spinning right now. So let's make sure we're good. You're now live. Okay. Hi. Hi, AO. How's the, how's the AO world today? Uh, good to be back. Another month of uh, getting some questions and sharing with you guys my experience and so forth. As I said many times before, so anybody new, I have a long history in business. I started an investment firm way back when and uh, went from financial planning to money management to a mutual fund that was ranked the number one growth and income fund in the country for three and five years. Went to a billion dollars in assets uh, in 2000 and the market changed and we had the devastating falls in the early 2000s. I ended up selling that firm and, and while I was getting ready to sell it, I went to India in 2004 and I set up a, a company over there to a development team to build out a software company and I've been doing software ever since. So my company is Efficient. We do mobile app and e-commerce development and we do the things that help companies be better getting access to their data, getting um, being online and finding different marketplaces for them to sell. So that gives you a little perspective on some of where I'm coming from when I answer questions relative to that world. I've been an EO, Entrepreneurs Organization, since 99. Been all over the world to 20 different universities, which are like five-day conferences and, uh, I don't know, another 30 or so regional events all over the world. Uh, a lot of them in the East Coast with the NERV conference in, in the East part of the U.S. I've been to five different ones in India, Canada, Texas, and so forth. So um, just a lot of exposure to speakers, great speakers, the book writers out there that are sharing business content, leadership, and so forth. So that gives you a little idea of some of my background. So let's jump into the questions here. We don't have that many today, so we will roll through these. Okay, so Eric asks, is it an HR problem to tell team members to eat breakfast, lunch, and take care of their personal vehicles? Business description and background of question. We are in the business of giving people their homes back from the invasion of rats. Over the years, I've noticed our team members usually don't eat breakfast or lunch and their personal vehicles don't get maintained. This has caused a lot of energy and forgetfulness throughout the day and missing days from not able to drive to work. They get paid over scale for our industry. We operate in California. Okay, Eric. Let's uh, uh, let's dig into this. One, this is kind of a sensitive area to talk about, okay? And when you start getting into the personal lives of people that work for you, they may feel that you are crossing a line and could be somewhat bad for morale. But there's ways to kind of look at this and explore it. So uh, I would say that you may have seen where uh, employers have offered a discount to say health insurance if employees go join a gym okay so think of that kind of model if, in what you're talking about i would look at this in the sense of um, maybe bringing energy bars to work for people did everybody start in like the same location or are they sent out from where they start from from home to a job with they already having a van or something that you provide for work um, if they come to work and then they go out in your trucks then there's a central launching point and maybe a meeting pre uh, a, a warm-up meeting for that day a huddle as we call them a lot of times then it may be offering the team energy bars and say, hey team, you know, you're here, you want to speak from experience, you want to tell people what to do. Hey team, I realized that I was a low energy, I've been low energy while I'm working, so I started eating these energy bars in the morning and it's really drives me, gives me more energy, I feel more productive and so forth. And then from there, you're just talking to people about what you've done and you know, so I thought I bought some energy bars, they're sitting over there if you want to take one and so forth and you know get different things maybe it's a protein shake or uh, you know protein cut carb shake that gives uh, has ingredients for energy uh, maybe there's little bottles that you can buy at the store you have some of those drink the protein drink uh, drink the other uh, drink into energy bars you know try some different options see what people gravitate to and then just do more of that if you buy them and have them do it uh, then maybe over time they'll start taking care of it themselves but you are start setting a precedent that you're going to be having these there 
but just see how it works. See if it gets them motivated. If they're more productive, the money you're spending on that is minuscule compared to getting the additional productivity out of them. On top of that, with the vehicle, um, uh, you know, you got vehicle type situation and tell people, hey, go get your car worked on is something that is also doing the same thing, kind of in going into their personal lives, telling them to do something that is not in the realm of responsibility for the role. So kind of like the health insurance thing, I would say, hey, I'll pay half of your oil changes every six months or something like that. That way they're going to get their car worked on and they're getting looked at and maybe that if they go to a certain place, maybe you designate the place they go to. Hey, take it over here to, to Tom's um, oil chain shop and they will do the oil change, I'll pay half of it. Well, when Tom gets the car, he's gonna know to check out other things and make sure these things are working and in line and that if they need other things, they can go back and tell the customer. So, or the, or the car owner. So th that's just some of my ideas. But like I said, this is a sensitive issue and you say HR, do you have an HR team? But if you don't and they're not versed on the legalities of this type of stuff, you could get, you could be crossing a line one for you know, lawsuit potential, but more so, more of the bigger issue would be um, the risk of having these people be a little, a little resentful to you, okay? Uh, so, hope that helps, Eric. Next question. Kristen. Kristen asks, what are some ways an entrepreneur who is in, um, who's in a stage that requires working 60, 70 hours a week can also plan some downtime for thinking of fresh ideas? Business description and background and question. The amount of time I'm working on growing my online business is not sustainable but necessary for now. I also know that when I have some free time, I'm better able to come up with innovative solutions and growth ideas. I imagine this conundrum is not unique. Curious how others have handled it. Okay, very good question, Kristen, because uh, one, it, it opens up the, I, the opportunity to discuss working in your business or working on your business. Okay, I've talked about this in, in a lot of conversations in the past where people have asked questions because it happens <laughs> most of the time. Uh, I have been blessed with the fact that I own a software company, but I can't write code. Okay, I'm a business guy, and so I focus on the business side of things instead of jumping in and helping the team with writing code when things get difficult or challenging or behind or whatever. So I can't work in the business. And you want to work on the business. And it sounds like you are working in the business if you're spending that much time. So there's a couple things to think about here. And that would be to check out the book E-Myth. Okay. E-Myth is a great book that has been out forever. I heard, one, I heard the author speak at one of my conferences, events years back, maybe like 15 years ago. Uh, he's, there's an updated revision of this book. It's all about how you have processes in place to do everything along the path to make it standardized and easy and that anybody you bring in your company, they can learn these processes and do for it. This is what McDonald's does. They call it kind of the McDonald's thing. There's a, you know, a button you push, then it goes down in the fryer. And then so much time is automatically, and then it, and then it buzzes and it comes out of the fryer. All these things are done so you don't have to think about it. And, and or processed out. You know, I'm not saying that you won't have to think about your business, but when you have processes in place, it makes running your business a lot easier. The other thing is, I would think if you're working 60, 70 hours, that you're doing things that other people could be doing at a lower cost um, and at a more viable kind of uh, approach to this. So I would look at this in the form of having a virtual assistant. A virtual assistant, that if you're an online business, the virtual assistants are great. They, you can pay them anywhere between eight and 12 to $15 an hour, and they can get a lot of work done for you and do things that you shouldn't be doing that I would assume you're probably doing because you think you have to do everything you need, that your business is not gonna run right without you, and that's just a matter of letting things go and giving people the opportunity. Also, maybe a matter of cash flow for you, okay? It's been that situation where we don't have the money, so I have to do this. And sometimes that's the case, but you have, scaling up, you have to get other people involved, otherwise you're never gonna be able to scale. So looking at those things, uh, making sure that 
uh, making sure that you have uh, the some other options in place so it minimizes your time. Okay, so to answer the key part of your question is how do I give myself some opportunity to have that time? Well, it would just mean getting up. Say you get up a little bit earlier. Good morning routine is key to the uh, to, to running a business and, and life in general in that you want to get up and you can do a walk in nature, you could do breathing exercises, you can do um, a reality statement where you're talking about your your the life that you're creating for yourself and other things like that, um, that meditation and so on that will allow you to have that perspective. I've had a lot of my ideas in the shower, I've had a lot of ideas on sitting quietly on an airplane, or reading on an airplane and other things coming to me when I'm not getting distractions from texts or, or um, calls or, or whatever, new emails coming in. And with that quiet time, it is allowed for that reflection. So if you can figure out some ways to process and to get other um, people involved in your business as affordably as possible, you can start with part-time VAs and get them doing so much hours and then as they do more work and they get better, you give them more work, you're making more money because you're focusing on the things that are going to make you more money. Okay? So, I hope that helps, Kristen. Next question is, Trent, Trent asks, what should I prioritize as my first steps when starting a marketing agency? Business description and background question, I'm working on starting a marketing agency for commercial and real estate brokers that markets broker listings directly to potential clients. Our focus is taking dental medical listings and activity marketing them to actively marketing them to qualified buyers tenants compared to traditional marketing agencies that place listings on their site for buyers slash tenants to find. We want to find the buyers tenants rather than having them find the listing. What would be a good stepping stone to provide efficient marketing in this space? What should I prioritize to make sure I can deliver value to brokers? Okay, Trent. Um, well, I'd really like to know, do you already know how to find these people? Okay, that would be a key question here. It's like, the, like you wanna offer these services, but you wanna offer them because you know there's a missing link in the world out there that is difficult to find these, or you have a way to find them. You already have a process in place to find them. It's kinda like, I'm in the software world, and I build, uh, so I build applications for people. Some people come to me for an idea. Well, to build that, it's, best to build out a prototype, a clickable prototype, that is gives you some click, but doesn't have a lot of back-end functionality. It allows you to click to see what would be happening if you were continuing, if you actually built this application. And then you can uh, show it to people, your potential marketplace, uh, focus group, something like that in your marketplace, and you can determine if that um, if that, that site is gonna be sellable. So you then, take the big money and spend on building it out, okay? So same regards to that, like in your world here, I would be looking at making sure that you have access to finding these people and that there's an opportunity in the marketplace for people wanting the service. If you call up some potential clients and say to them, hey, if I could provide, um, what you call it, uh, you want listings to you, dental medical listings, and so forth, and I've actively know that these people are wanting to do work, would you be interested in paying for my service? And then maybe ask the question like, what kind of range do you find would be attractive for this? And you know, I would give them a range, I wouldn't just ask them to guess. So you kind of know with like the lower end, medium range, high end, high range of this world. Uh, you know, or you can ask them to guess, but I would, I would think it'd be better to give them a range and see where they are in the form of how they would pay for this. And they may say, well, based on what I do right now, I'm paying for a particular type of service and it cost me this. If you could do that, that would be a lot better. I would be willing to pay more for it. So again, you just you need to have that awareness that this is going to work. Okay, now, so how do you market them, you said? Well, that's going to depend on a lot of things here. And I don't have the information to, to dig into that with you. But first, if you have access to these people, marketing that to them is going to be, you're going to have a lot of value there. You're going to be able to share that value. And then sharing it is the typical world we live in now. Social media, blog posting, driving people to a site to do maybe a webinar on this 
and so forth, using the click funnels approach to it. And Russell Brunson, Russell Brun Brunson has written three books, um, Expert Secrets, .com Secrets, and Traffic Secrets. And I would look at those books and read about each one to see what would apply for marketing. It may be like traffic. If you have a site already that you can drive people to, then how do you drive that? And I would look at that traffic book could be one of them. So I'd explore that to see. So I hope that helps. Next question is Greg. Like your name, Greg. And the question that he's asking, what are the best ways to create a more consistent sales pipeline? Business description and background of question. In a web design and development company, I, net, I network, I get referrals from my partners along with my con, current clients, and I get traffic through my website. That flow is not steady enough, and I like to figure out a way to get more leads without spending on advertising. Do you have any suggestions about channels I am missing? Yeah, Greg, I got some thoughts on this. Uh, thanks for asking a question. But <laughs> this is one thing you said. It's like if I don't want to spend money on um, uh, without spending on advertising. Well, you got to spend money somewhere, somehow, okay? If you want to look at it from the um, inbound approach, what we call marketing inbound, it became very popular years back. Um, HubSpot uh, founders wrote a book on inbound marketing, and they've, they've, they've uh, I think it's called inbound marketing. And it's all about those things you do to build out your contact list, market to them, and um, do so with you are putting out content. You're driving them to get an email address, and when you do, you're going to have you put out content on social media. And you're going to put out blogs. You're going to put out, um, and now if you've got people in your office already that can write blogs about what you're doing, showing your expertise, giving out some free advice, giving out free materials, uh, free PDFs maybe that explain your business some more, then you are going to get people's awareness and attention, and they're going to want to start talking to you and engaging in a conversation and calling you up. But that takes money too, okay? The other way to do this is to put out the ads, to do um, Facebook ads, to do YouTube ads, to do um, paid AdWords through Google and find, go after finding the buyers, the, your target market, figure out where they hang out, what groups they're a part of, where sites they go to and so forth. And you're gonna be marketing to them by paying for those ads to get their attention. And you're gonna offer them something that they would, you would, they would want to give you their email address. Okay, so that's kind of the world that you want to play in. Uh, doing it, like you say, more cost effectively could be the inbound marketing if you're already getting a good amount of business, but you want more steady business, and that's to build this inbound. It takes time, though. It's a three to six month process, but it's going to be very rewarding for you to have something consistent out there that's continuing to draw you leads. And when you do that, it's going to put you in a very good situation. I would also look at Russell Brunson's books, okay? Um, probably the, um, the dot com secrets and then the traffic secrets dot com tells you kind of how to be out there in the world and then traffic secrets how, tells you how to drive traffic to your business so next question ricardo asks, what are some practical ways to show team members appreciation business description and background question i own and operate a barbershop with three other barbers i want to continually show gratitude and appreciation how can i practice this habit without breaking the bank okay ricardo I have some experience with this. I have met the, one of the, uh, uh, the owner of the company called Giftology. And he is, he speaks a lot and telling stories about how he sets up gifting businesses and he just gifts to people like crazy. And with, with that, you build in that uh, reciprocity type of approach where they want to do something for you when you do something for them. So when I heard about him and started getting a feel for this, he does, he got different products he used. One of the main ones he used are Cutco knives. If you haven't heard of Cutco before, Cutco are the large, are, are the high end um, knives, uh, you know, cooking uh, utensil type things like a, say steak knives or kind of like a carving knife and a carving fork. And I've bought these for people and they got their names engraved. And Giftology, if you want to connect connect with them, they will put together a personalized note and send it out to them. So you said without breaking the bank. Well, these Cutco knives can be like 200 bucks just for one, one set, one knife, one fork type thing. But you know what? There's this lasting impression that goes over and over and over again. Instead of giving people a pad with your name on it or something, and you don't, you know, in the giftology world, you do not put anything with your name on it. 
This is all about giving something of value to them and they will remember you. Something that's been very, um, that I gave to all my clients and I keep getting feedback on it, which is really positive, is a Aura Frames, A-U-R-A. And they're digital frames where you have a mobile app and you can take pictures and other people can download the app and sign in your account and, and then they can upload pictures. So it's great for a family to share the pictures that they can upload the most recent things and it's refreshing the, the, the uh, digital screen. And I've had clients uh, video the screen and saying six months, one year later, like Greg, I just that I've been looking at my digital screen. And what connects with them is that there's these emotional connections they have with their family on there, their spouses, um, you know, their their children doing things, and that that warming connection. Uh, resonates with them and they're like yeah it was Greg who gave me that that gives me that warming feeling and they continue to think about me as um, somebody who's added value to their life okay so the Cutco knives are used uh, when they're used they're not used all the time they're used they're like they got the engraving of the family name on there and then people are like really connected and John Rulin who owns Giftology talks about stories about how people come back and say hey you're the knife guy you're the one who sent us those knives oh my my wife loves you and she talks about you all the time as far as what you've done for us and all the great memories we had so that's where you could do something like that 200 or so on dollars and it's going to last for years okay maybe that you give another set of cuckoo knives another year down the road but when you do a higher end gift like that it adds so much more value and appreciation so i would consider those options okay so last question here greg again asks, how do you do market research business description and background a question I like to get competitive analysis of what I charge versus what competitors charge. I've tried price shopping, but my main product is websites and finding out what my competitors charge isn't easy. They need to set up a consult and ask me lots of questions. Is there a way to do this for other like companies in my area so I can find out if I'm not charging enough? Okay, well, that uh, Greg, this is a tough question. And I, same situation as me okay software company we build applications it's really hard to compare unless i go through a deep requirements analysis of what it's going to cost to build something and to compare that with somebody else you basically got to take like an architectural blueprint for building a house you got to take an architectural blueprint for building a software application and then with that a contract different contractors can come in and figure out the diff their different pricing for that house based on those plans well same thing with us so what i would suggest you do is this i would look at some main um, aspect okay building a website does it have a, a, a couple plugins to it does it have you know i'm going to say with two plugins with some other features uh, does it have a uh, connection to web app, uh, an e-commerce application in it i would set a standardized listing and i would take that standardized listing and then i would call your competitors and say you know what you charge for those uh, those key features that standardized um, list that a majority of people would want to buy and then I'd get the standard I, I'd give that same scope to different people in your area and get their pricing and that way you're gonna have an idea of how competitive you are or not instead of just kind of guessing well maybe I want this maybe I want that and answering the questions um, I would go and give them the, the exact listing and see where where that takes you okay so hope that helps Greg and that's, uh, that was all my questions for this month, so a little bit shorter of a time period together this month, but to look forward to seeing you guys again next month, and in the process, uh, keep driving, keep pushing, it's all about, business is all about being tenacious, it's all about, um, you know, getting through the low spots, knowing that you're not alone, knowing that times can be tough, and with that, socializing with other business owners, so you get their experience here, you get their, you hear their stories about how, you know, things have happened with them, cash flow, people problems, whatever, and you're able to, um, you're able to keep driving because you know that you're not alone. Okay, until next time, talk to everybody later. Take care.